what's this, kids? Oh, this is another excuse to do weird stuff again, isn't it? Well, your last excuse did result in Beetlejuice, and that was a big critical and box office hit. Okay, you can take the rest of the day doing another one. Those bunch of scams. This is another excuse to do weird stuff again, isn't it? Okay, look, the last time you did this, you made little monsters, and that wasn't nearly as good. So I want you to try a lot harder this time, okay? <sighs> I'm sure they'll get it this time around. Okay, look, your last film was Cool World. Cool World! There's only so many times you can use this excuse for doing weird stuff just for the sake of doing weird stuff. I'm giving you one more chance. If this next one isn't nearly as good as Beetlejuice, you're both in big trouble. All right? Get out of my sight. Did you enjoy Monkey Bone? I will not breathe. I will not breathe. Well, how can you accomplish that if you're saying it? <gasps> Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Sometimes we like to give in to the dark and weird simply because it's dark and weird. Some directors are so good at creating them, it's how they make their living. Giving us visually goofy, oddly nonsensical, yet somehow massively entertaining madness. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And after a while, the novelty of the strange wears off and we see what still holds up and what doesn't. Films like Gremlins, Adam's Family, and Paranorman still hold up. Films like Monkey Bone, Monkey Bone, and Monkey Bone do not. It's hard to say why some of these other weird films work, but it's very easy to see why this weird film doesn't. Despite it being visually stunning and surreal, it's annoying as balls. It's loud, it's stupid, it's a good thing the director did these films because much like a trippy coma, I don't know how far I can go before I couldn't come back. So, why is this the one that killed the weird and dark movies for a while? Let's take a look with Monkey Bone. It was third grade. You know how some teachers have those flaps on their arms? I began to feel aroused. Instantly sold? There he was. Monkey Bone! The monkey. I'm so glad Cartoon Network finally greenlit an R. Crumb Christmas. Though I'm surprised the title wasn't Merry Crumbus or Beware the Crumpus. Honestly, I'm not even really joking. This is a new kid show that's going to hit television called Monkey Bone. And isn't this just the audience you would expect applauding a show like this? Move over, Samantha. Our new Sex in the City is Monkey Bone. Look at this. There's even tons of kids merchandise. They're that certain it's gonna be a hit. Every kid's gonna want three, and they're gonna want their friends to have three. Otherwise, they're not gonna be friends anymore. Uh, yeah. For this. I began to feel aroused. You have no idea how excited kids are to see what Duckman giving up looks like. You know, aside from the first time. The human representation of the 90s trying to die and the 2000s trying to begin. Or as you call him, David Foley. Addresses the crowd and introduces the creator of the comic strip the show is based on, Stu Miley. Played by Brendan Fraser. He did not draw that. You lying sack of suck. He did not come up with any of what we just saw. Oh, come on, there's usually good-looking characters in these weird, dark films. Yeah, why doesn't it work here? Silence! Ow! In all those other films, the main character was quirky, but still normal. The grounding reality to offset the strangeness that the rest of the film is about to throw at you. But Frasier is already supposed to be weird and awkward and tormented. The crazy geek behind the odd cartoons. Tell me if even for a nanosecond you believe he's that kind of guy. The cool thing is that you open it, you go out, it closes, and you can't get back in. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty bad. No, 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 he's so believable! Just look at his chiseled, smiling, 
action hero demeanor that so represents the shy artist. Yeah, it's a good, but if later got here sooner, it, it would be a lot better. All right. We get it. I mean, not since Woody Allen or Paul Giamatti have I so bought the introverted, uncomfortable, social outcast this much. Dude, look at this now. He won't let us leave. Oh. The monkey. The monkey is good luck. I never had any good luck. We get it! We won't choose someone like him ever again! And what did we say about breathing? <gasps> He's about to propose to his girlfriend, played by Bridget Fonda. Again, representing the weirdo loser who gets lost in his own awkwardness. We said we're sorry! Breathing! <gasps> and he tries to get her to leave the place. Because, you know, this social stuff is so hard on him. He's totally gonna bench less if he talks anymore. Oh, I mean, uh, in between his weird cartooning. Do you want to leave? Yeah. You're a big hit. Everybody loves you. Come on. Okay, advice, by the way, don't have a background that's more interesting than your foreground. Like most of you, I'm not listening to a thing they're saying and instead trying to figure out what episode of Simpsons that crusty frame is from. I know I've seen that one before. Is it after season seven? I stopped watching after season seven. I, I mean, I watched, but you know, it wasn't as good. It's when it started to go downhill. I mean, okay, never officially jumped the shark in AMO. I don't know, the one with the fake skin or that, that kind of jumped the shark. That was pretty bad, but damn it, I'm still reviewing Monkey Bone. But one of the pieces of merchandise, a giant inflatable raft, that overused market. I thought they yanked those after people were disturbed sitting on Dora's face. Goes off and sends their car crashing into a wall. Frazier is sent into a coma while Fonda is completely untouched. Their car was a giant airbag. How was he knocked out? As Frazier enacts a vision he'll soon become familiar with watching himself die. Now arriving in downtown. Welcome you to downtown and while you're in your coma. No oh boy, you're not gonna take that background overshadowing the foreground advice, are ya? Boys and girls of every age think our designers were overly paid. <laughs> hey bud, glad to see me. Okay movie, I'll make a deal with you. Nix all the actors and just leave a 360 camera in the middle of the set? I'll call it even. Yeah, for all its faults, this world is pretty damn amazing. This place is called Downtown, where people go when they're in comas that's apparently ran on people's nightmares. And apparently everyone watched the same episode of Japan's Pee Wee's Playhouse to come up with these images. While it is a marvel for the eyes, it's a DC for the rest of the senses, as Frazier comes across his creation, Monkey Bone, voiced by a sped up John Turturro. Now I know you're all in comas, but my first guest is gonna spike your job! What's the difference in speeding up Totoro's voice and really anybody's voice to sound exactly the same? Totoro costs more! And trust me, casting a big name actor to do the voice doesn't distract how balls gratingly annoying he is. On the ball, the lady got a loose caboose. I'm bald, get on the Julie train. I'm bald. Okay, I'm over the novelty of him being stop motion, now I hate him. I wanna be loved by you. Anyone else created to work out the sexual issues of the director and or writer? Oh, thank God, it's not just me. So Frazier's sister, played by Megan Mullally, wants to pull the plug on him. Why? No, that's not figurative. I'm actually asking you why. You probably have as much understanding as I do. As far as I can tell, she just wants to kill him and there's no motivation the film gives as to why. I mean, okay, she says they made a pact because their father died so slowly, but she seems way too excited and eager. I don't really get it. Doctor, hey, sweetheart, which one's the plug? What plug? The plug. But it's dark, so it's funny. Yeah, it's dark, but it's only funny if we understand why. This is the first time we've seen her. We don't know what their relationship is like or even what she's like because we don't know why she's acting this way or if this is how she normally acts or what. There's no context. Yeah, but we blackmailed Bridget Fonda into being in this. That's gotta count for, okay. The doctor says after three months, it's less likely someone will come back from a coma. So three months pass as shown by this dissolve. I thought it felt more like a two and a half month dissolve, but I still got the general passage of time as Frazier continues to train for how to not be funny in Looney Tunes back in action. You have humiliated me in public for the last time! I doubt that! Back in the pack! Ah! You know, I'm just gonna say it, what's the appeal of this guy? I mean, I know he's good looking and he played the likable doofus okay, but looking back on his work, I can't say he's awful, but 
I can't really say he's good either. Just look at this scene where he's supposed to act like Monkey Bone is in front of him. That's it. Back in the pack. Not like I held my butt in the box. I think Brendan Fraser is the less convincing puppet. Does it ever seem like he's looking at this thing? And even when he's acting with other actors, it just seems like George of the Jungle Light. He got an exit pass. Where's mine? When do I get to go home? He gives the performance a million other actors could give. It never seems distinctly unique. Who am I kidding? I'm never gonna get out of here. To his credit though, I don't know if any acting can make scenes like this work. Ooga, ooga, da, 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 da. <laughs> ah, the days when adult humor and animation was a novelty. A monkey jumping in a woman's boobs? But those are cartoons! Those things are for children! Aren't they? Their antics are interrupted, though, when one of the people in a coma is sent back to the living. Oh, Beagler, I have come. I'm the ghost of Christmas missteps. I'm here to convince Michael Caine he can act with Muppets. The man is sent back to the real world through the mouth of Abraham Lincoln. Because... Because... Well, you didn't think of it. So it's clever. Yeah. Come here. Did you know that if your knuckles are pink, you're more likely to be a genius? Oh, well played. Get back there! <sighs> Frazier wants to figure out how he can get an exit pass, so he goes to a pajama party of Hypnos, the lord of dreams who loves the nightmares Frazier comes up with. Again, if the story could just politely leave and we could play a Rammstein song over this, I think we could have something. But the film insists it has a narrative as Hypnos tells Frasier where to get an exit pass. Pack, pack, no life support. <laughs> I'm just the god of sleep. This is death's bailiwick. Anybody got thumb deserves to die. Could you please shut up your Roger Rabbit? I know he has a name, but it's just your Roger Rabbit. Hypno says if he travels to the land of the dead, he can steal an exit pass for himself. But Fonda's convinced he's still in there trying to get out. Does everybody here know what Honorix is? It's nightmare juice. You think we can decrease the levels? Oh, I want to give him more. I want to give him a massive dose. I want to scare him awake. You want to scare him awake? Show him the reviews for single white female. But in all seriousness, you are a treasure. What are you doing in this movie? Frazier disguises himself as a wicker tampon and sneaks in to see the Grim Reaper, played by Whoopi Goldberg, and her assistant, played by Thomas Hayden Church. I'm yours. What do you want? Well, let's get to reaping. Let's go. We're the paycheck in between two big things. They steal the exit pass, resulting in... Whoopi's head exploding. <laughs> Thank you. It's just that, now that I'm leaving, there's so many things that I wanted to say to you. We really should have been working on our chemistry instead of having the backgrounds eat us alive. But Monkey Bone betrays him by stealing the exit pass and going into Frasier's body in the real world, resulting in the real Frasier being put away. So like most boners, you think it's your friend, but it often gets you in trouble and sometimes even lands you in prison. Bone is in Brendan Fraser's body. All the possibilities this opens up. I mean, there's just so many defining character traits of Monkey Bone. Like, he's silly. He's horny. He likes to dress like Marilyn Monroe for some reason. Honestly, I'd probably get more character out of the peach from Selleck's last movie than this. So, we have a not very defined character now being portrayed by a not very defined actor. Don't get me wrong, he's clearly trying. He's jumping all over the place and screaming and such. But again, that's kind of expected. Nothing is really added to make it his own. Even the spit take just seems run of the mill. See? <laughs> Come on, it's a spit take. There has to be more life in it than that. Part of what makes those work is the unexpectedness. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. It gets even more uncomfortable when Fonda tries to seduce him. I've been 
What a peculiar way to seduce a man. This is what I call the PG-13. Laughing yet? Yeah, I think Fonda's look of horror speaks for all of us. Here I come, baby. <laughs> no, stop showing that! This is not worth whatever impact you think it's having on us! Coming to get you. Ah! Okay, I will die a happy ma- A less angry ma- I will not die if you never show me that again! Oh, thank God one of those Hulk transitions finally had a good use. Who are you? What do you want? You gotta move fast in this crowd or you'll starve. Frazier's thrown in prison with a ton of crazy minds who create great nightmares. Including Stephen King, who says Cujo stole his body like Monkey Bone did when he was in a coma. I went through hell to get that exit pass. And who got to use it? Cujo. Yeah, I always wonder why Stephen King's last five books were just bark, bark, bark. How about that nightlight I asked for? To make things weirder, that's the actual Stephen King playing himself in the movie. Okay, it's not, but admit it, you were starting to IMDb that! But Hypnos infiltrates Monkey Bone's dream to remind him that this is all so he could spread more nightmares around the world. We help him swipe your body, he helps us get a heap of brand new nightmares! That's right, this guy who had maybe three minutes of screen time, he's our villain now! Oh, there's so many complex motivations and personalities going on in this film. Like, why the hell Chuck E. Cheese genetically melted into Barf the Dog? This movie's asking questions that didn't need to be asked. So Monkey Bone tries to find that nightmare Jews brought up before and force it on people all over the world. Okay, if that poncho is indicating this is all a secret sequel to Unbreakable, I am totally opting out of the Shyamalan Cinematic Universe. The writer of Batman, everybody! No, seriously, Sam Hamm, the guy who wrote Batman, also wrote this. I actually hate to say it, but it makes a little too much sense. The villain wants to release a gas on everybody disguised in a giant cartoon while a sexy cat woman comes in suddenly deciding she's in love with the main character, and McDonald's wants to attach their Happy Meal rights to a franchise sure to have children wet their bets. Maybe Keaton saved those movies more than I thought. Give those movies credit, though, they didn't spend an entire 90 seconds congratulating themselves on a farting monkey doll. Oh, and you guessed right, I counted. <laughs> Just for that, you get the button. Monkey Bone tests the nightmare juice on the pet dog, giving it, what else, a nightmare. Whoa, cat videos on the dark web are creepier than I expected. He puts the doll with the gas inside a giant statue of his character and... Homie the Clown, that was the Simpsons episode that had that crusty frame. God, it was driving me nuts. Oh, and that scene sucked. So, as mentioned, the cat lady breaks Frasier out of prison, only to immediately be caught again. They don't even show him being caught, it's off screen. So, why'd you have him escape at all? Someday we'll find it, the screenplay's connection, the author's intention. Maybe. I'm a simple person. I do an honest day's work. Why does everybody make it so hard for me? That is literally what Whoopi said every day of shooting. Okay. Frasier's sob story wins her over, though, so she sends him back via SNL actor trying way too hard. <laughs> Where am I? In a shot that could crop out their mics better. Chris Kattan is now playing our hero for a bit, and to be fair, his physical comedy is pretty good, playing a gymnast whose neck is broken, so he has to keep finding ways to prop it up. This bit's been done literally to death, but he does pull it off okay. I'm just waiting to see where the Better Call Saul storyline is gonna fit in. I... Meanwhile, Foley gets a whiff of the nightmare juice from the farting monkey bone toy. Damn, what the hell is this stuff? Oh look, it's what Henry Selick said after every rewrite. He starts seeing his nightmares in real life because, let's face it, this is all just an unused Freddy Krueger script. Close of turned evil! They're working together! You're really gonna regret that this was the film you went naked for. Ow! 
No, no, Bertie Ding Dong! Oh, excuse me, I almost interrupted the master. No, 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 Bertie Ding Dong! Can I package your misdirection? Ladies and gentlemen, forget about the naked man with the purple face. <laughs> oh, that old joke. But wait, it's an early 2000s bad film. Dance number time! <laughs> Oh, you forgot to ask the shadow of the cameraman if he wanted to dance. Before he continues to be DOA, dated on arrival, Catan literally swings his way in because even though it's supposed to be Frazier's mind in there, he suddenly knows gymnastics. Honestly, give Catan even more credit though, he does pull off the only bit of believable emotion in the movie. I had to come back, Julie. I was happy, Julie. I really was. Just try to remember me like that, okay? He's giving a better Brendan Fraser performance than Brendan Fraser. But Monkey Bone tries to stop him through Rat Race's greatest hits, though their green screen was more convincing than the special effects film. And they both get sent back to downtown. Hey, Kramer, Donna, hey! 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 Woo! Hey! I was just practicing my fake excitement for when I have to do Theodore Rex. Did it seem real? Monkey Bone is left back in Fraser's mind, he goes back to the real world to be reunited with Fonda, trying to pretend she gives a shit, and let's go out on what we know was the funniest part of the movie. People, for the love of God, take off your clothes! Take off your clothes! Monkey Bone is arguably the last of the dark, weird, wild, and crazy movies that exist just to exist. There's a good reason it's the last one, though, because it's done horribly. While the visuals and imagination are stunning, the lack of focus on motivation, comedy, and even just fun are completely misdirected. Thankfully, this director would do more projects that were just as dark and imaginative, but this time carried charm and intelligence along with it as with more weird and dark movies that decided they wanted to be smarter too. This just leaves you mentally numb, like a hot spatula pressing against your brain for an hour and a half. I'm glad other imaginative and likable ventures rose in the future, but this was certainly not one of them. Okay kids, it's time to go home. W wait you're related to those kids then? No, never seen them. I have to ask more questions around here. Hey, this is Doug Walker doing the charity shout out and this week we are doing Action Against Hunger. This is an international relief and development organization committed to saving the lives of malnourished children and families while providing substantial access to safe water and long-term solutions to hunger. Recognized as a world leader in the fight against hunger, they have pursued its vision of a world without hunger for nearly three decades, combating hunger in emergency situations of conflict, natural disaster, and chronic food insecurity. With headquarters in New York, London, Madrid, Montreal, and Paris, their field staff work in over 40 countries to carry out innovative, life-saving programs in nutrition, food security, water and sanitation, health, and advocacy. If you check out their site or their YouTube page, you can see how their programs reach over 4 million people a year. They do amazing work, and you can help them do even more. Take a look, give a click, and see if you can help those who help others. Thank you.